Hi guys, uh, welcome to the first episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. Um, I am your fat guy, Andy Baker, and the plan is to do as many episodes of this as people want or I can be bothered to do. Um, doing little recipes that I really enjoy, um, that I've done a few times, that I understand well enough to show to you. Um, and hopefully doing them in a way that you can follow along at home and do them yourselves using stuff in the kitchen that is easily accessible and that most people have. Um, the first thing we're going to do is one of my favourite foods ever which is burgers, love them to bits. Uh, we're going to do smash burgers and also we're going to do um, a really cool homemade Big Mac sauce as well. Now I don't know about you guys but I've definitely got a bit of a hole from all the disgusting, processed, sweet, sugary, chemically fast food that you can't get anymore. Um, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere that's got really good local fast food places that still deliver, I hate you, because uh, I don't. Um, so I have to make everything myself. So um, yeah, we're gonna do smash burgers, Big Mac sauce. Um, the audio on this might be a little bit hinky because uh, I've only got one microphone and I can't be bothered to keep moving it around and I'm too stupid to stay in one place So the microphone's here If I'm over there or back here, we might lose it But try and stick with me anyway If the sound of burgers frying overwhelms the mic a little bit, then I apologize Try and stick with me. It'll get better in the next episode and then the one after that So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get on with it Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make our Big Mac sauce. So, to start off, uh, the base is just mayonnaise. Um, you can use light mayonnaise, but full fat, everything is generally the way forward. Um, so you're going to want to use about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise, which is, I don't know, so however much of this you want to make, mayonnaise is like three quarters of it. So, you want a good squeeze of mayonnaise. After this is all done, I'm going to put the um, proper measurements and stuff down in the uh, description so you can copy along if you want, but I don't measure stuff that often. Um, you are also going to do um, about half of what you did of mayonnaise in tomato sauce. You can use any tomato sauce. I'm using the Heinz. But... Okay. And then about a quarter of what you did the mayo in mustard. Um, you probably want to use American mustard, but if you use English mustard, just use about half of what you would use of this. So just a bit less, because English mustard obviously way better, but also a lot stronger and will take over the whole thing if you're not careful. Okay, so once you've got that done, you want to give it a little stir with the wooden spoon that you absolutely didn't steal from some restaurant in, uh, in Nottingham. And then, oh, isn't that pretty? As you can see, it will end up roughly the colour of Big Mac sauce. So like a really pale, yellowy kind of red. Um, I'll try and cut to a picture Okay, so once you've got that, that's your base. Now if you taste that, you can already taste it. It's like nearly there. Um, always taste as you go, like every, every single step of the way. Taste, 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 taste. Um, so next we need some white wine vinegar. Just a little splash of that, just to brighten it up. Just the... Uh, you only want a little splash. Also waters it down a little bit, just so it's easier to spread on and feels more like a sauce, you know, more like a sort of spread. Um, now, pickles. If you don't like pickles, then you're dead to me. Leave, I don't, I don't need your views. Get out. Um, but yeah, you want a tiny bit of pickle juice that comes in your jar of pickles. About the same, much, same as your white wine vinegar, uh, you, your white wine vinegar. So a little spritz of that. And also some diced pickles, which I did earlier because I didn't want to do it on camera because I've not really got very good knife skills. Um, that'll come, don't worry. 
Um, so you want about like three or four decent sized pickles, diced up as finely as you can get, so like crazy, crazy tiny, and diced up, and bang that in there as well. Now, usually you would put a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of onion powder in here. Now, I don't have garlic powder or onion powder, and I couldn't find any at the shop, because this is the apocalypse. And apparently, those things are now the new toilet paper. Um, but what I do have is garlic paste. So I'm just going to put a little squirt of garlic paste in there. Nothing crazy, just a little bit. And I'm also, instead of the onion powder, going to do a little spritz of paprika. Paprika? Paprika. Yeah, one of those. Okay, and then once that's in, give it another stir. Now you're not going to need to cook this or anything, so all you need to do is get this stirred up and then leave it in the uh, leave it in the fridge so that everything can kind of meld in and get to know each other. Stole that phrase from binging with Babish. Much better show than this. You should probably go watch that. Um, also, before we put this in the uh, in the fridge, one little secret ingredient that McDonald's puts in absolutely everything to make it taste like it's awesome when it's not, but makes it taste like it's awesome, sugar in everything, absolutely everything. Um, so we're just going to put a little bit of sugar in there as well. Get a little bit of sweetness. Obviously, because this isn't hot, the sugar will take a little bit of time to decrystallize and dissolve in the sauce, but and this is now our sauce. So we're going to put this in the fridge while we deal with our burgers and everything else. And then uh, we're going to move on to doing the smash burgers. <sighs> right, so burgers, smash burgers. If you've not had a smash burger before, um, it's basically just like a normal burger, but instead of it being preformed into a patty and then cooked and then whatever, you smash it down into the pan and just let it cook out as it is. You get really nice crunchy crisp bits around the outside and it's delicious. So, first thing, ground meat. Um, this is 20% uh, ground sirloin steak. That's the best you can get. Uh, ribeye is also good, chuck is also good, but whatever you can get, I mean if you just go into, you know, Tesco, Morrison's or whatever, just go for the, um, the mince that says 20% fat on it, because you want at least 20% fat in your mince, otherwise it kind of tastes like shit. So, um, go for that. If you're on a diet, I don't, I don't know, you know, why are we even with friends? Um, so, we're going to make little golf balls out of the mince, we're just going to do that with our hands. So you want to take about a golf ball size amount, maybe a little bit more than that. Give it a little squidge up in your hands until it's nice, even consistency and looks a little bit like a golf ball. There you go. So we're going to make two of those for now. So one more. I already fucked this up once, um, so I'm hoping this works this time because uh, I didn't turn the sound on last time. So made the whole thing, did the whole burgers and everything, and uh, no sound. So on the good side, practice, but on the bad side, quickly running out of meat. So two golf balls of mints. We're now going to give them a little sprinkle of salt. Um, always try and keep a big open thing of salt nearby so you can just take pinches out of it and use it whenever. You want to be using salt all the time on everything. It's amazing. Never underdo your salt. If the audio is shit, by the way, it's because I've only got one microphone and it's like in the middle. So if I move over here, it probably sounds bad. And over here. will probably sound really sexy in the middle. So salt both sides of your balls. Okay. And let them sit in the salt 
for a minute. What that's going to do is it's going to it's going to um, flavour the balls, obviously. But what it's also going to do is going to take the moisture out of the outside of the the balls as well. So when you smash them down into the pan, they're not as wet, so they're going to crisp a lot easier and you know be a lot tastier. So we're going to get the pan on. If you don't own a big ass cast iron skillet, then just use whatever pan you've got. Um, but these things are fucking awesome. You want to use them for everything. Um, I love this more than my parents, my sister, um, some dogs. Um, so yeah, cast iron skillet. Oh. And it stays lit. Okay. So we're going to let this get up to as high a temperature as we can get it. So literally, we want it to be absolute rip-roaring hot. Whatever pan you use, same thing. Get it as hot as you can physically get it. Um, we're going to put a little bit of oil in there. Um, another easy way to do your oil is if you get a booze bottle, something like gin or whatever. I think this is like cheap Audi gin. Um, put a little uh, cap on the top like they use for booze. And then that means you can just pour your oil, put it back to the side, nice and easy, always on hand, no mess. So we're going to wait for our pan to get up to temperature. While that's happening, um, we're going to need some lettuce and tomatoes for this. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, they were sold out of lettuce because of the apocalypse. So I got a pack of like mixed lettuce. We're just going to pick the lettuce out of this, shred it up a little bit, and that's just going to be our layer of... Um, sort of salad on a burger because you've got to have salad each on your burger it doesn't really serve a bird i mean the crunch is, is quite nice so you know it's something but if you can get proper lettuce obviously use proper lettuce um same tomato nice little slice of tomato on the top never hurt anybody so we're just going to move our balls out of the way and just pick out bit of lettuce and just give that a little chop so it's nice and fine and stringy and it can be a nice little garnish for our burger. Same with the tomatoes. Just want to do two nice Big straight slices of tomato. Kind of fucked that one up. Pretend that didn't happen. One of them and one of them. Perfect. Right, pan looks like it's getting nice and hot. You'll be able to tell when it's really hot because you're not an idiot and you can tell when things are hot. It's hot. Right, so to achieve the smash burger effect, what we're going to do is, let me just rinse this off real quick. Uh, you know proper shows have like people who get all this stuff ready for them in advance and um, are good, the, the, the other shows are also good. Um, well, the differences are the the better looking. The people in the other shows generally much better looking. Um, not usually fat, unless you're like Matty Madison or you know a few of the fat ones. But they're also funny. So, but it's fine because this is just for my Facebook friends. And if it goes further than that, amazing. And if it doesn't, I won't cry myself to sleep every night like I. Balls. So, we're going to get our big golf ball things. We're going to pop them in the rip roaring pan. What we're going to do is we're going to put them slightly to the top of the pan to leave lots of room at the bottom so that we can toast our brioche buns later without moving our burgers. Thinking ahead. So, we pop them in. Get your spatula. Pop it on top, like so. And then with your spoon, push it down. 
And then you can also use your spoon to just loosen it off the spatula. Same again for the other one. Pop the spatula on top, spoon, push it down. And then loosen it off. Um, I'll just move that so you can see. There it goes. Look at that. Right. So, we're going to let those go and we're not going to fuck with them. We're not going to keep pressing them down. We're not going to toss them, whatever. We're just going to let them sit there and then the bottoms are going to caramelize beautifully. Get all brown and black and crispy and tasty. Unctuous, that's a good word. Not 100% sure what it means. Put the in down in the comments if you know. Um, and then we're going to wait for our burgers to cook. Um, we're also going to top these with some good old fashioned American cheese. Fucking awful stuff. Terrible. But with burgers it works amazing. So, I don't know. There's certain things in your life that you want to fancify and make sexy and better and pretty. But some things are just good, dirty and horrible and awful and that just makes them even better. Um, burgers are one of those things. So, we're going to get ready to toss our burgers. Just going to give it a little bit longer. And then we're going to get our brioche buns while those are finishing on that side. And we're going to just cut those in two. You probably shouldn't cut towards your hand like I'm doing, but I'm a fucking dangerous guy to know. Okay, so we're going to toss our burgers. We're going to put our cheese on top. And then we're going to put our buns in the pan. And then we're going to cover the whole thing. So it can all warm through and get nice and sweaty and sticky and let me. Um, right, so on top of burgers, I just gotta show you this. You see that like brown on top? I don't know if you can see, but oh my god. Looks beautiful. Nice and crunchy and crispy. So we're gonna move our burgers all the way up to the top. We're gonna get a single slice of American cheese. Pop that on top. A lot of it is going to fall off the side and go to the pan and get all burnt and crunchy. Those bits are the best bits. Do not throw away those bits. Keep those bits. And then we're just going to move the oil around a little bit and then throw our brioche buns, making sure. The bottoms of them, the insides of them are all touching the pan. And then we're just going to cover the whole thing up and just turn it down slightly. Okay, so we should probably get some plate this up on. like labels and stuff on YouTube if I'm just going to get deleted for this, but uh, we'll see. Cheers. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to take our buns out. See that? That's what you want. Nice and charred. A little bit of black, not too much. Just a little bit of blackening around the outsides. We're going to turn our pan off and just let the, uh, the burgers go for a sec. So, we're going to get our sauce that we made earlier, which have a little taste. Mm. It's so close to Big Mac sauce. Really, really good. A little spoon. Okay, so first things first. Sauce. Do not be stingy with your sauce. 
good wallop of sauce on there. Beautiful. And then we're going to get the burgers, which look amazing. And see that crispy cheese on the bottom? Get that in there as well. Adds a really nice extra textural, textural element to it. A little sprinkle of lettuce. And tomato on top to finish off. You can add pickles to this as well, but there's pickles in the sauce, so it doesn't really feel like you have to. And then top them off. And you tell me that those don't look beautiful. And then you can put them in the So we'll give it a bite, squeeze, get all the juices out. burgers in what was that like 10 minutes 20 minutes do it at home take a photo post it underneath this was the first episode didn't go that badly love you all see you soon another fat guy has just gone